And we're live. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with me. This appreciate it. This is your Omi Inca 8 coming at you from the uh, grassroots. This is a grassroots uh, discussion. And uh, this is uh, Omi's uh, organic broadcaster bringing you a live segment on a grassroot production, a grassroot foundation. Talking about how it would be if we could come into enlightenment and we could begin to plant our gardens and ignite the fire with the first revelation, uh, the first um, revolution of the fork and the knife. Someone said, how could we make a change? And our first effort is make a change with our fork and our knife. That would be a great revolution. Uh, Remembering back when I was uh, able to incorporate gardens within my neighborhood and what it meant for me, I'd like to reflect on that. Uh, just having a garden would, had meant that I could actually impart others with the knowledge of um, preparing their soil and then dropping their seeds in the ground to expand and have their own food that they would grow. And that time is not so far away. It's still, you know, in my path. And I want to talk about what it meant for my neighborhood. Even though I wasn't properly uh, putting soil in the ground and I was using fertilizer, unbeknowing to me and my ignorance, uh, that this fertilization could cause some side effect. But nevertheless, I grew the crop. And it was very, very instrumental for others to see and gave them the desire to to partial out a segment of their backyard to grow their own food. Uh, To grow your own food would mean that you have freedom. And my uncle once taught me, as he built our garden, that long as you can set off a segment of the land for yourself, you will never go hungry and you'll always be able to feed your neighborhood. And that he implanted in me while I was yet a young girl as I watched him crop the garden and uh, bring in the harvest. He not only just let me watch, but he made me participate so that I could begin to start to build this concept within my spirit and my psychic. So then after that, every year, it was a garden for me. And we always look forward to determining what plants would grow and would yield a crop. And every year, we sought out to see if it would be the cabbage one year, uh, if it would be the kale the next year, if it would be the bell peppers, the peas, the lima beans, the crowd of peas. So each year, we had a chance to challenge ourselves to see which peas were going to come in. And it was always an opportunity for us to work in a communal setting. People from around the way came to help and came to pull weeds as well as to pull peas and beans so that we would have enough for the year. And we always gave a portion to our friends so they went home with bags of food just for their day's work in helping us. We gave them months' supply of food. But nevertheless, it built community within all of us. And that community I like to see come back again. It has left a lot of our communities, and some of us don't know the beauty of having community. And I like to see that community come back again. And I'd like for it to be a part of every neighborhood, because we have lost community. We have lost community to the point where we don't know how to develop friendship with our neighbors. We don't know how to see if they're okay, if they have uh, enough to provide for the month. We don't know how to knock on the door and ask them, is everything okay, when we know it isn't. We have become afraid of our friends and our neighbors 
and we don't know how to treat our neighbors as ourselves. And so many, so many situations cropping up over miscommunication. You would think as we would have gotten more into this technology that our skills for communicating would be mastered by now. But as this technology comes in like a fleet in the night, we become less and less familiar with communication. And in with, with more and more degrees we get, we still can't decipher whether or not the noun and the verb both agrees. And we take things the wrong way, and sometimes we lash out, and we have uh, discommunication, disharmony in our commun- in our communities just because someone didn't understand. So even if a pea or if uh, a carrot or if a bell pepper would be the, the, the key to ignite friendship and brotherhood, then it would be well worth planting the garden to be able to wake up those people to see that we are one and that uh, if injustice is heaped upon one of our brothers, then injustice is heaped upon all of us, and that we must come together and see that we speak with one voice and that we're one. Our great government has con- has contributed so many uh, disadvantages to us by lying to us and by feeding us poisons and by uh, causing us to segregate amongst ourselves and creating enemies for us and causing us to hate our brothers and manufacturing uh, someone that we would have a foe with. And we really have got to start knowing and believing that the government means us no good and that we cannot allow him in our affairs. And we certainly cannot take his uh, his uh, potted meat and his uh, cheese and his factory, pre-factory food, and think that he is here to protect us and provide for us. We certainly cannot fall for that. And maybe this is a a good thing that they have taken away the EBT card and they have slowly uh, grafted away the food that they used to give the mothers. Maybe it's a good thing we don't rely on them and that we set our gardens up and rely on ourselves and maybe we may have to produce the food for the community and for the city with our gardens, and they will have to come to us and stand in line if we, as we fill their bags. And then we will see what kind of smile they will have upon their face when we have to feed a nation of the world instead of us waiting for surplus food for them that is slowly killing us anyway. This is a grassroots garden that I have um, manifested in my mind that one day it will come back again, that everyone will be able to go out and test the soil in their backyard and see if there's too much sand in it and if they need to go and cut that sand with some dirt. And that's what the world is like now. The world needs a little bit of our dirt to help cut the sand, the confusion, the disruption, the lies and in, in the windows and the uh, uh, slowly deteriorating uh, communities. That's what the world needs is a little bit of our dark dirt to help to integrate with that sand that they have uh, implanted in our grounds that eats out our gardens so that we don't. Uh, so that we're not able to yield a crop. But this is the grassroot talk that you're getting this evening. For those of you who are gardeners out there and who long to have your gardens, don't give up because you can still go and cut that sand and incorporate that black dirt and still have your gardens. And if you want to do something even better and you don't want to wait on that sand to dissipate, then put your gardens above ground and build your boxes right on top of the sidewalk and create levels, not only one level of the dirt where the where your uh, ground green earth is growing, but also create an aqua aerobics. Put the water right above it with your fish tanks and start schooling and growing your fish so that you have meat for the winter and you can be able to share that meat with somebody else 
and fish is a meat, you know, and it is flesh. And you can school and grow your fish there right above the water of your garden. And that's called aqua aerobics. And there's a lot of that going on. People are building these aqua aerobics right in their basement, and they're using grassroots tactics. Now, don't forget, when you plant your garden, you must plant a row of herbs as well, like milk thistle, stinging nettle, and um, murduck, and uh, bladder whack. Planting these herbs will help your other crops to grow strong. And these herbs can be used as your medicine and your meat as you bring them in the house and you cultivate those herbs and you, you dry them out so that you pull the oil out and you boil them. And you boil them for your teas and, your, and you grind them and use them as your fusions and tensions. And they're your medicines. And then they become your meat as well. And therefore, you're able to put them in the jars and, and cultivate them so that over the winter you can infuse them in your food and grind them up for your seasons. So this is a time that we learn to go back to our mother with We learn to be able to uh, provide for ourselves. We've been looking to the government for too much, and we won't realize that God will give us manna from the earth, and he will feed us. So we have to go back to looking at having our grassroots gardens, and this is a must for us. It's not an option, but a must that our pantries will be filled. We take our mason jars and we uh, broil them and sterilize them. And then we blanch our foods and place them in the jar with the paraffin around there, the top of the lid so that they go right on the shelf in our pantry. And then we have meat for the summer, meat for the winter, meat for the spring. We have enough that we can share with others. And we never have to go out to the supermarket because we become the supermarket. And not only do we cultivate uh, the vegetation, but the beautiful flowers that will be added right in between our gardens, that they will fragrance the air and that they will bring about the bumblebee and the queen bee and that they will lurk around the garden to protect it and that the rabbits will be uh, on the outside with the fences uh, cropped in their faces so they don't tear down the garden and the garden continues to grow and it grows stronger and as the garden grows stronger our community grows stronger and each person walks the sidewalk to go in between the gardens to see how they're doing to uh to send out a message to their neighbors that I shoot a rabbit out of your garden this morning and we are to protect one another's garden and we are to support one another in our effort to get it to grow because we know that we planted the seed but then somebody else in the neighborhood comes and waters it and they as they water their own garden that water yours too. But then God is the one that will give that increase. And as we see the increase and those people traveling down the streets with their wagons full of the vegetation that they're giving out to the community, all in the, all in the name of God. And at the same time, they give out a loaf of homemade bread that someone may eat tonight and someone may be able to provide for themselves and not have to go to the government saying that, can you give me meat to eat? My children are starving. We will know how to plant and protect and provide for ourselves so that we won't have to be attached to the government. And we'll give them their medical back. We'll say, no, we don't need your medical. And we'll hand them their money back. And they'll be shocked because we decided we will prepare and take care of ourselves and if there is to be any money taken out of our check, we allow that to come out um, our check with pride and respect so that we don't subject ourselves to letting them put us in their back pocket and owning us and doing with us what they please. 
we won't be able to experience that anymore because we'll have dignity in our community. And as far as them saying that there's black on black crime, it won't exist anymore because we're yielding and handing out dignity to every man and to every man and child. They can walk with their heads up knowing that we provide for one another and that we don't let an outside person come in to provide anything for us because we know they want to buy us with the price and we can't be bought with the price. So our gardens are growing now and we look to heaven to give God the thanks and our first fruit, which is what we call Kwanzaa, the first fruit. We give it back to God and we hand that first fruit back knowing that God was the one that gave us the ability to grow this crop. And so we give him the first fruit. We make concession. We make sacrifice. We go to the river together, and we carry our one piece of fruit, and we send it out on the surface of the water. As we watch it go out over the water, we lift our hands up and ask God to bless it, to bring us a harvest the next year and the next year and the next year. And God receives our harvest and accepts our sacrifice that we have made, knowing that someone could have eaten off of that particular uh, vegetation. But nevertheless, we give it to God because it's our first fruit. And we call out Mother Yamin Ye. And we bless her and brother and mother Oshun as we send out these fruits to the water. We make our libation and we do our, our, our rituals right there on the water in the community. And, and the community all comes together to do this ritual on a yearly basis. And then we are blessed and our community is blessed and it continues to grow strong. This is the grassroot concept, people. This is what we should have been brought up off of. Some people still remember, but a lot of them have forgotten. Make sure that you don't forget that this grassroot method is something real, and we have to get back to it as we talk about Dr. Sabi and his concept of developing a biomedical cell food. Even though he could not read or write, God blessed him with the ability to be able to do major chemistry and to work as an engineer. Never before had he ever lifted a book or tore into the pages, but yet he knew the formula. God placed that information on his uh, frontal, on his frontal lobe that he could pull from this information and know exactly which biochemist to put together to design something for the black man's chemical makeup. Now, we know that God, that he made his transition too quick off this earth, and we know it wasn't his time to leave yet, and the great works that he was bringing us and the knowledge that he was putting out into the universe was so grand that scientists became jealous of the skills that he had, that they sought this man after, and they wanted to cut his legs from up under him and to put him to rest. And nevertheless, he became stronger, and his vibe is still on this planet, and is still facing, uh, uh, some men are still facing the adjudication that he is going to bring to them through these young men that he's going to inspire to keep his word alive. His word is more stronger now than it ever has been. And even with Maya and, and, uh, and Usha, they are still climbing higher with his products and putting his products out there. But his second wife is catching hell. Why is she catching so much hell? It, did she come from the devil? Did she come to do harm to him? Because I know Sister Maya and, and uh, his daughter Usha, they are working very hard to keep this grassroot allegiance alive, to keep the products of Dr. Savior alive, 
Now let us be able to obtain those products and let us be able to partake of them so we can grow strong and that our bodies will be healthy because we know that they seek to kill us. We know that they want to destroy us with their test tube products, but we mustn't take their medicine. We must be like the Native American, but we must repel against their medicine so that we might live out our life because we know their whole scheme of things is to cut us down real rapidly and fast and to do away with us. But we mustn't believe in the Bob II man. He has no good tidings to bring to us, nothing but death. Yet he smiles in the corridor and laughs about the test tubes that he puts poison in as he pretends to be giving us life. He's giving, he's giving out death. And let us learn this and let us know this and believe this because he's not from among us. He's not a human being. He cannot be a human being if he's thinking to kill off masses of people. He must be thinking from an animalistic stage. He has not come into the spiritual age as some of us have. But as we eat the food that brings us harmony, it will put love in our heart. But if he eat the food of wrath, his food will be poison to him. His food will kill off most of his inheritance. And his, the very food that he had intended to give us to destroy us will actually turn on him and his children down to the thousand generation. I'm be knowing to him because he doesn't love God. But most of all, we are striving for a better place here on this earth. Our heaven is going to be on this side of the road, not in the sweet by and by when we make our transition. So as we talk about this lifestyle of the grassroots, where can we start with it? Can we start in your neighborhood? Are you ready to make the sacrifice to go out in the rain and to dig the crop and to prepare the ground and to plant the seed and to fertilize and pick the weeds? Are you prepared to be a partner in this establishment? Are you prepared to be a part of Omi's grassroots in vision? This is a vision. It hasn't come to part, hasn't come to pass yet, but it is a vision. And you must write the vision for he that readeth it, let him run with it. For the vision is not for the appointed time, but is yet to come. And as we plant the vision, we know that it will surely come. And that's why we're giving you the vision this evening, the vision that you will allow this Grow, this ground to be prepared. As we prepare our bodies and our minds, we must go through a transformation. We must be made again. And God must give us a chance to be born again. Some of us have fallen so far away from being a putin human being, but he will give us that chance again to get in right standing if we'll confess our faults and our shortcomings, he will allow us to get in right standing again because we know for a thousand years we were promised peace on this earth and that we may be able to reside here on this earth in perfect peace. So is that time now ready to come? Is there a message that you can send us, Lord, to let us know when that time will come? You promised us a thousand years of peace without the spirit of Satan on this plane, and we would live and dwell amongst ourselves in perfect peace. And gardens will grow again, and people will share again, and you'll see lovers loving again, and children will play with the lion like you promised. So when is this time coming? Is it up on us now? Should we look for it in the by and by, or will you come and send a message from heaven, and will anything come out of the pearly gates, and should we look to the heavens for any of our blessings? But today, we're saying that we're looking to the grassroot of our, our, our planting and our harvesting and our growing of our vegetation, that you might be amongst the universe and that the very trees will come and give homage to the gardens and that the universe will want to assist us and help us and embrace us and care for us once again and give us protection and sweet shade as we lumber, as we labor out in the harvest, in the hot sun that 
the very trees will come and shelter us, and they will be a part of assisting us in this great gathering in the grassroot coming of Omi's grassroot envision. And our grassroot foundation will not tarry, though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. Thank you. And we will speak with you soon and know that we, too, can have a vision of a grassroots vision of our community coming together. Thank you. Odavo.